Hey guys, the build show is on the road today, driving with my friend Steve Basic. You probably saw our other videos. Steve's an incredible architect uh, based out of this uh, Boston area, but works all over the country. We're going to see a project uh, that he built a couple years ago with a retired engineer that just is super interesting and super efficient. I heard Steve earlier in the day say, it's probably one of the top 10 most efficient, most interesting projects built in the last couple of years in America. So that's a high bar. This is going to be fun, Steve. It's exciting times, man. Dan, Dan Roy, um, with his help being a re retired mechanical engineer, we took a passive house to zero energy level. He's been in the house about five years, and he's never paid an energy bill. And in wow. fact, all he's done is cash checks from the uh, utilities. Five years, no energy bill. How about that? That's and, pretty cool, Steve. And Dan's in front of us in a Chevy Bolt. He run, <laughs> drives about 15,000 miles a year on the production in his house. Man, that is cool. That is cool. All right, well, we'll pick the video up and we'll get to uh, Dan's house here in a couple minutes. Hey, we're here, Steve. Here we are, Dan Roy's house. Oh man, that is a pretty house. It looks like a normal house to me. Nothing special at the street. Nothing special at the street, but all the specialty is in between the walls. And it's all special inside those energy bills. Man, let's when, go look. When every month when that energy bill shows up and that bottom line says 0, 0.00, gotta make you a happy homeowner. <laughs> I'd like you to meet my good buddy Dan Roy here. How do you He's do the that? homeowner of the Roy Passive House here that we built about four or five years ago. It's a certified passive house. It's the second one in Massachusetts. Wow. And uh, it was the feature in the fine home building series that we did on the construction of this house. Dang, this is an incredible house. Look at this. Pretty, very pretty. Give us a Thank quick uh, exterior tour. What do you notice on the outside that's different on a passive house, Steve? So, I mean, obviously this is the south facing facade here. Uh -huh. It's about 30% of the facade is glass. It faces due south. One of the interesting parts of this house is 57% of the heating energy for this house comes through those windows as sunlight. So that leaves you only to have to pay for the remaining 43%, which we do with electricity and the PV panels of the uh, tuned system that we put on this house to take it to zero energy. And uh, you can hardly see the PV, but it's right up there at that ridge line, right? It's right up there at that ridge line. Dan, we have, what is it, seven point? There's an 8.7 KW. 8 KW system up on the roof there. Um, you know, one of the one of the challenges in designing this house was that the southern facade was on the front of the house. So obviously we want to put a lot of glass, but we had to create kind of an environment here that was inviting and that would handle all that glazing. So we came up with the exterior patio and gardens, et cetera, to kind of soften this front elevation here with all the glazing. Very cool. So, all right, let's go have a look then. Let's go inside, shall we? Oh man, this is a pretty house. Simple open floor plan. Beautiful. Um, again, it's built for, you know, a, a couple, retirement couple. So it's, you know, the, the aging in place, ease of everything. All mm -hmm. the rooms are kind of tied together as one big room. It's all connected well, so that Dan and Vern can live out their years the way they want them. Steve, for, uh, for someone who's not familiar with Passive House, uh, give us the like one minute version. When you say Passive House, uh, I don't necessarily know that everyone watching this video knows what we're talking about. Gotcha. So simply Passive House is, if you Google it, it's the most strict building guidelines that we have in the country. So I think somewhere here, Dan, we have the, do we have the Passive House plaque on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get a picture of that. But this is a certified passive house, which means that there's a set of building standards and an air tightness standard of 0 0.60 um, CFM at 50 pascals that has to be third party tested and verified. So the whole house was built to a set of documents that were accepted under passive house. And then after it was built, was then certified to being built to those specs yeah. to be a certified passive house. And, uh, and the general idea on a passive house, Steve, is that you could passively um, uh, basically survive if the electricity went off in a house like this, right? Yeah. We're, we're so, insulated and airtight well enough that if the grid goes down and you're stuck in your house for three days, even though it's 10 degrees out, your house has enough insulation, you've got enough of a down jacket on in this cold climate 
that your house can coast for that period of time, right? Yeah, we had a, a, a similar house in Western Mass that was being monitored and the electricity went out for five days. The house dropped about 10 degrees in five days. Holy cow. Um, Dan monitors, he's, he's got temperature monitors, the retired engineer in him um, forces him to understand everything about the house. So he monitors the morning temperature and then the afternoon temperature. So he gets to see the temperature rise just by having that sunlight pour through those south glazing windows. And like I spoke of, we're talking almost 60% of the heating energy comes through the windows as sunlight. Wow. So we're, we're just borrowing from nature. So this room that we're in, living room, kitchen, that's the only heating and cooling unit in the entire room, in right? In the first year, that was the only heating and cooling unit in the house. Wow. We subsequently installed, we pre-wired and piped for a second unit upstairs. Dan had pre-planned in case. The humidity levels upstairs and the temperature rise in the summer was just on the verge of uncomfortable. So he elected to add the secondary unit. But understand the secondary unit is not about load, it's about distribution, right? The problem is, is we can get a machine that can give us the right amount of heat and the right amount of cooling. We just can't get that heating and cooling around the whole house. Right. So we put the second unit in for distribution, not for load. We can do a quick drill on these windows. These are very similar to Shuko, except these are made by Macroid and they're wood framed. Okay. So the, the, the same idea, you, the tilt turn deal. Man, look at that. This here, this here, this here. I tell people furniture quality and Ferrari performance. Beautiful. Very nice product. They worked out very well. And the uh, exterior is an aluminum uh, yeah, it's cladding? Like aluminum cladding. You can see it there. Well, oh, that's pretty. And look at that. That's the part that really is. Yeah, is you got that double seal on there. Yep. So you got seal one there. You got seal two there. Right. We've got There's a little, a little bit of a seal here too, over out there. Okay. And then you've got this real thick frame. Right. And then you've got triple glazing on these windows, yes. right? That's why we're so thick yep. in this spot. And what kind of uh, what kind of values are we getting out of the window like that, Steve? These are the, the same single band glass that we saw in the Shuko. These are probably 0 0.10, 0 0.13, depending on what whether it's fixed or operable. So translate that into our value for us. R7 plus, okay, 7.5 on some of the fixed windows. So Steve, what are we looking at here? So one of the things about a passive house is overheating. You put a bunch of this glazing, well, while I want that sunlight and I want that heat in February and March, I probably don't want it so much in August. So how do I deal with it? We can do exterior shading, which we did, but the real shading device here is a roll down screen where we cut down about 50% of that energy coming through the windows. Boy, you can really feel it too. So, and it makes a difference. And some people want to put shading devices on the inside, but like I said, that's a dumb idea. Cause if you put the shading device on the inside, the energy's already in the house. Mm -hmm. I'm not shading, I'm not stopping anything. Right. We want to stop that energy from coming through the windows. And that's cool. Yeah, yeah, like... Any of you guys haven't uh, yet tried Niagara toilets out of Canada, have you heard of those? Yeah, uh-huh. I got two of those up here. How do you like them? Excellent. Really? Excellent. That's a single flush Niagara. They didn't have the dual flush ones huh. at the time, but they did now. But this is like 0.9 gallons, and it's just fine for me. Is that right? No problems with it at all? Even my, uh, even for my son. Wow. So, so this is how the, uh, the boost works. So if you hit that thing there for, if you take out a shower or something, you hit the 30-minute boost, and it'll light up. So you're going to hear it ramp up now, hopefully. Where's the light on that? We're seeing a little tidy LED. It just oh, okay. blinks on so it. So the light, yeah, okay. It just blinks on it. So now it, this is going to run for 30 minutes. Yeah, or until yeah. we shut and it. And then this is go. sucking the air out right out. here, Dan. Right. That's right. And how many CFM is that? Do you know? Right now it's about 20 CFM. Okay, so it's not running a bunch. Maybe on oh, max, sorry, it's about 35, 35 CFM. But it's enough to get the steam out of here. Yeah. And then, and when then don't forget, when you're done, it's still, it's still evacuating. Right. So it's running all the time. Push for shower, I like that. I just saw that. Push for shower. Yeah, because I got lots of kids running around. And <laughs> so then you've got timer off. You've got 30, 10, and 60. Yeah, that'll shut it off. Just hit a little click. Okay. It tells you that it's functioned. Gotcha. I also put in wall heater units here. See these? 
Oh, yeah. Just okay. Just a boost for, if it's cool in here, it'll just warm it up for about three minutes. Yeah, so a little supplemental yeah. heater right here. And this is, this is for, uh, this is a on-demand water. Oh, that's for your uh, Metlin demand pump, right? That's right. That's yeah. where it is. Right. And where's your pump located? Over here, you'll see it in a minute. Okay, so gotcha. Basically, you hit that thing, and it'll it'll run the pump for about 45 seconds. Yep. And primes the uh, water at the shower or something. And then when we turn that on, right, it'll you're be... hot in a couple seconds. Right, right. Yeah, that's cool. Right now, it's about 10 CFM when it's running so just running steady there. state. Yeah. Okay, cool. so we're in one of your upstairs bedrooms now, Dan, and, and you see you've got two grills on the wall one there and one there that's connected to your fresh air system made yes. by zender right so it's, and it's sending in filtered air 24 7 basically yeah. and then this one's sucking air out of now, the bedroom is that a return these are both supplying fresh air okay all the all the evacuation is in bathrooms and in the kitchen gotcha and this is just a puff of air basically if you put your hand up there right. you're feeling maybe just the 10, you know, 15 CFM, something right. like that. And where's that system located, Dan? Where's right the uh, the lungs of the house, as they call these things? Right here. This is my high-tech insulation system. We just oh. the Dan Roy acoustical coil. Yeah. So this is the Zender here. Get this is where the ground loop was. See, did you see this? What's up? Do you guys see where my ground loop used to be? Is here, but ah. there were fittings everywhere. And, uh, oh, this is good. You can really see it. Who hell knows what caused it. This is where all the uh, the tubes go. Um, hey, Steve, will you narrate what's going on here? I'll let Dan. He's in there. All right, Dan. Uh, will you, so will you give us the... So what is this... If someone says, what is this big yeah. octopus in here? What do you say? Okay. It, its purpose is to provide continuously filtered fresh air into the home. Because it's an airtight home, you want a, a good source of fresh air. So this is taking in outdoor air here, mm -hmm. coming through this device here, which is a heat exchanger, which is sucking stale air out of the back pipes here from the ba bathrooms, coming through here and not touching the air, but actually through a heat exchanger, taking some of this cool air from the indoors in the summer and pre-cooling the hot air coming in from the outdoors. So then the stale air gets exhausted out and so the whole thing is about 80% efficient. So, and then yeah. it's and then it's a balanced system, right? Yes. So if we're sucking out 100 and some CFM, we're gonna push we're gonna in 100. It, right. There's two CFM. separate blowers inside this unit that that provides a match. When they commission the unit, they they measure all the CFMs to make sure that they match. And Dan, we talked about this earlier, but how does this unit know when to come on? What's the control system for this? It's basically running all the time. Okay. But we do have. Uh, a sensor down on the first floor, a CO2 sensor, that will measure the carbon dioxide in the home. And so if there's a lot of people in the house, uh, it'll ramp up this system. And then if there's less people, it'll just ramp it back down. Gotcha. And that actually works quite well and actually should save quite a bit of energy. That's very impressive. Yep. Very impressive. Um, and these are all sealed ducts, right? I'm seeing some yeah. mastic on yes. there. Right. So these are, this is a sealed and insulated duct system. Right. Uh, and uh, tell me about your A.O. Smith Voltex back here. Yep, that's uh, actually a very good unit. It's We only run it on heat pump. We've never run it on the resistance heat, which which it has. You know, all of these heat pumps come with both resistance and heat pump, but you mm -hmm. can run it on heat pump only. And so basically it's sucking heat out of the out of the room, out of the house, and pumping it into the water. Nice. And so that actually you put one watt of electricity in, you get... Two and a half watts of cooling out. So Man, it's that's got a incredible. CLP of two and a half, roughly. That's really cool. Newer ones, this was, yeah, newer ones are even better. How old is this one? This is 2013 we put it in. Okay, so it's been running for right. four years now. Right. No problems whatsoever? Uh, nope. That's great. Just change the filter every six months or so? You just clean it. It's just the filter. Clean it. Yeah. Gotcha. These here, these here uh, the Zenda filters, you change those, yeah. Okay. That's the uh, on demand uh, circulator. Oh, there's your, uh, yeah. You can see it there. So that's the Metlin demand it. pump. Yeah, so when you nice. when you go in the bathrooms and hit that button, it's just a low voltage switch, like a doorbell yeah. button, right. basically. Yep. And then there's probably a uh, inline sensor in there that goes, hey, the water's hot, turn right. me off. Right, exactly. And right. now we've circulated out the cold water, dumped it back into the system so nothing gets wasted down the drain. That's right. And so basically when you hit the shower, 
it's got hot water right away. That's really cool. Yeah. All right, guys, let's close this out. What an incredible tour, Dan. This is an amazing house. And Thank Steve, you. great job. So Thanks, if we could summarize all this, you know, we saw a lot today. We talked about the systems and the processes and how low energy this house is. What's, what's kind of the thing in your mind that sells it to someone to say, hey, this is, I really get it now why I want to build a passive house? Well, I, I think Dan Roy, is it, in, in my portfolio, it's probably the most successful high performance home that I have. I mean, his house just simply works. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Dan, I've, I've seen him present on his house and he puts it very simply in his last slide. The question shouldn't be, why should I do an energy efficient house or why should I do this? The question is, why wouldn't I do this? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. It's, it's a no brainer. And, and Dan has proved that. That's pretty interesting. Dan, what, do you, what would you say to people who, uh, who say that? We love living in a passive house. It's incredibly comfortable. Uh, we have no energy bills, including our house, which is all electric, and the car. And the car, is, too? You're paying to, to uh, yes. charge your Chevy Bolt, too? This is a Chevy Bolt with a B, as in Boston. Uh, Look at that. We charge the, charge the car from our roof panels. So we're basically using our solar energy for the home and our transportation. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Yep. So basically everything in the house is all electric. Election, yes. Electric yes. induction cooktop, electric heat pump water heater, yep. uh, two mini split heads yep. and is all that's heating and cooling this house. Right. Everything's electric. And then you've got a gas line to the house though, right? Right, we use that for a gas grill out back and for a little um, high efficiency uh, gas fireplace. On your porch, basically. Which is outside of the passive house. But other than that, your house is so efficient and so comfortable and makes so much power that you can even power right. your car right. uh, as well as the rest of the house. Right. Impressive. Guys, thanks for joining us in today's video. I'll put a link to Steve's website in the description below. And I think there's been at least some other videos or papers uh, written. Fine Home Building, yeah. Fine Home Building's got some. I'll put a link to those if you're a Fine Home Building online member. You can get to those in the description below. Otherwise, hit that subscribe button. New content every Tuesday and every Friday. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.